Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Built to Go. This is a bonus episode. This is not a normal episode. If you're looking for the normal episode, it will come out Wednesday as normal. This is a special chance that we have to sit down with Jess from Go Rome Tech, and she's going to tell us about how she handles the massive problem of getting internet on the road. I mean, let's face it, if if folks have a hope of being able to work while they're on the road, it's almost always going to rely on a decent internet connection. And and Jess has a solution for that. But we're also going to talk about life on the road in general and and just how important it is to stay connected, maybe sometimes even when you don't want to. So Jess, thank you very much for coming on Built to Go. You're so welcome. I love that. Yeah, especially you still have to be disconnected sometimes. As much of a tech nerd as I am, you got to take those moments too. Absolutely. You got to be able to turn the button off. (laughs) I I just did a podcast about living life on your own terms, which is what I think most of us are actually attracted to van life or nomad life. As I know you guys are in an RV, and to me, that's the same thing as a van. You're just in a big van. Yes, (laughs) it is a big van. And we've, you know, we've been through the evolution. We've tried all the things, and this is what suits us best for right now. We probably won't travel this large forever. Yeah, that and that's exactly what you should do. And living life on your own terms, unfortunately, is dependent on making money. And a lot of times making money means you have to be connected to the internet or, you know, you've got other reasons too. You've got family to worry about and friends to keep in touch with and all that. So assuming you did not grow up in a van that you lived in sticks and bricks at some (laughs) point, tell me how you ended up becoming nomads. Oh yeah, you bet. That's, that's a a fun story actually. So uh, my husband and I have, have uh, individually always loved to be camping and outdoors folks. We have raised seven children that are all now adults and we have uh, grandbabies now. So we brought our kids up in that. I mean, consider the affordability of taking your kids camping versus taking them to Disney for the weekend. Right. So we just (laughs) we really wrapped nature into how we lived always. And nature fills my soul. We love to be out in nature. We loved the the feralness that it allowed our children to grow and run and whatever. And we used to tent camp for years and years and years. We had a Yukon that had three bench seats. So all nine of us could fit in one vehicle and we would right. pull all the things we needed for any trip on a trailer behind us like a motorcycle trailer all loaded up. It was comical when I look back on it, but it was amazing. <laughs> we had great times, you know. And that really just set our love in for it. And as our kids got older and, you know, they were busy, we obviously lived in a sticks and bricks. They had to go to school as they became more and more active and and independent as children do as they grow up. My husband and I got a little bored, to be honest, because we were so used to spending all of our time wrangling these kids. And so we started taking longer and longer trips. Uh, And then during, um, you know, COVID shutdowns, uh, my husband, who had been previously tethered to an office, I was always a traveler with a home office. Um, They closed his office and we thought, God, we're really free now. Right. So Mm. we did a proof of concept in um, 2021 after his office had been closed, where we were gone for about six months, um, you know, in in a smaller trailer. That was our next evolution. And then after that worked out well, we said, we can do this, but we need a bigger space. So we went for the big one Uh, where we're at right now, which is in there in Imperial Sand Dunes in Glamis, California area. Mm -hmm. And there was a a freaking rattlesnake under our tent. And the next weekend I went and bought a trailer. (laughs) That would do it for me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It It was crazy. Loving nature is all fine and good, but sometimes nature is a little scary. (laughs) That was not a, that was not a fantastic moment. So that's how we got to the the travel trailer. And, And that was really only about five years ago. Um, And then just, you know, the nature of of our work allows us to do it from anywhere. And we've been helping other people have this quality of life through the technology that we've sold and implemented for them for years. Like, why aren't we doing it? So (laughs) perfect. You and your husband are both working separate jobs. So you both need your own kind of office space. Is that how it is? Yes, that is exactly how it is. So we wound up with the setup in a in a fifth wheel toy hauler. We're also offering. So all the places we go include places we can we can run around in our Can Am Maverick after we're done working. By the way, that's our life work yeah. balance. So, <laughs> so yes, we got a Momentum 397th. I think it's like 43 feet long. That's it's a big beast. One. So my office is in one of the slide areas. Mm. We put in a smaller couch and put in a, a desk there for me. 
And then, you know, between here and the garage area of this particular model is a nice glass door, which is great for noise <laughs> reduction. Right. Uh, and then my husband sets up his office. He's got a full command center with three monitors and the whole shebang he needs to do his job effectively in the garage. And then we've got the separation. So when we were in the smaller trailer, one of the things we were challenged by was just that we're both constantly on the phone. I host a lot of events for entrepreneurs right. and I'm I'm pretty high energy. And he's trying to talk about very, very technical stuff yeah. that he doesn't need me distracting him from and vice versa. So we needed the separation. Here we have everything we need to be very comfortable to do a day's worth of work that is on different cool. applications. Yeah. For listeners who may not be aware of the type of rig she's talking about, this is a, this mm -hmm. is a really big fifth wheel. So it hooks into the back of a pickup truck. It's not on the bumper you have like a separate bedroom suite where there's like a master bedroom with its own bathroom and yeah. then coming down the stairs there's a kitchen and living room area mm -hmm. and then you've got that slide out that you've turned into your own office and then there's a door that when you open it leads into a garage but when you're parked you take the vehicle out and then seats fold down and desks go up and it becomes your husband's office that's correct. And when we have guests, they have their whole own suite. There's a bathroom back there. Even. Oh, you got two so, bathrooms. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's, oh. it's almost ridiculous even to me and I live in it, but it really suits our needs well. So you're not the type of folks who are going to be say, uh, well, we're going to do California today and then we're going to go to Vegas tomorrow and then we're going to go to Arizona the next day. You You go somewhere and you sit for a while. We do. We like to sit for about two weeks at a time. Just ah. the, the cost of movement and the hassle, if you will, of loading our Can-Am up to get to the next location and that sort of stuff. Okay. But we do love to boondock and that's what we're doing out here right now. So we're pretty self-sustainable from that perspective. That's one of the things that really appealed to us about this rig. So you got big holding tanks. We got big holding tanks and two, right? Because we have two bathrooms. Right. So we have like you know, extra, <laughs> extra hey, things. The front one's full. Go, go to the back. <laughs> That's right. You're going to have to use the, the guest one, right? And then, um, you know, we've got solar panels and the built-in generator. So we're able to to work just on what nature provides for the most part. That is awesome. I, I love that. You know, Van Life Channel, most people are in much smaller vehicles. Of and course. I have occasionally had to work on the road. Sometimes I don't have to. My schedule is very strange. But there have definitely been times when I'm like, oh, I've got a Teams meeting at 3 o'clock. And I'm <laughs> driving around. And I'm like, oh, we're, I'm in North Dakota. And I have to find a cell phone signal. So, you know, in North Dakota, you can actually kind of stick your head out the window and look for a tower because there's nothing in the way. But it's such a stress that... This need to be connected. The only connectivity I have is my cell phone. And I know other people have tried Starlink and things like that. But for you guys, it sounds like from what you've told me, once you're set up, it's just like you're at home in a city as far as Internet goes. Absolutely. So there's a few factors that go into that. I mean, we we use LTE services like you would on a cell phone quite a bit as well. Break that down. LTE is, okay. is kind of like the Internet for cell phones that came out before 5G. That's a good way to explain it. So Thank it's, you. Yeah. It's, it's fairly fast. Uh, it's fast enough to do a video call, for example. It's yeah. not the latest greatest, which means it's more available and in some ways more stable. Yeah. 5G is based on solving a density issue mm -hmm. uh, because of the way that the providers uh, distribute their Wi-Fi, <laughs> distribute their internet right across the towers on which bands that they push those signals out on. And yeah. iPhones, you know, receive some bands. There's other gear that receives different bands. So we work to make sure that we're getting as many bands as are published, <laughs> if you will. So the thing about 5G is it's really just about a speed. So we can create a 5G experience that's not using the 5G network. I'm going to be a little cynical here and just say that all of this push towards 5G is really like a hardware play because all of the hardware that exists is not going to accept a 5G signal. It's all about the, the infrastructure. 5G requires an upgrade in infrastructure. And a lot of it's just marketing. I mean, I know on my iPhone, let's see, I've got the 14 now, but before that I had the 11 and it would come up on the screen and say 5G E. It has a little E next to yeah. it. And so I was like, but this isn't supposed to be 5G capable. So what's that? And I went and looked it up and it was like enhanced or extended or yeah. some. It's just, but it's just marketing. It was using the same old 4G or whatever that it always had. But because they knew people wanted 5G, they just changed the letters. Yes, that's you know, exactly what a lot of it is. <laughs> the message to the listeners is don't care about the letters. Care about if you can do what you want to do. <laughs> that's what matters. Correct. 
Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I, I would agree with that completely. So that's why I say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Trying to be a little politically correct for my oh. my professional friends. But yeah, it's I wouldn't worry about it. Don't do okay. it. Like if you're going to buy a new phone, the new phones are all baked in with 5G at this point. That's fine. But don't rush out to get something new that has 5G on it just because you think it's going to work better. It's not going to work that much better. Not so for the that, next few years anyway. Yeah, that's it's true. And I in traveling internationally, I can tell you 5G doesn't exist in many places. I was getting 3G <laughs> at best in Uruguay, for example. Mm-hmm. And- you know, and if you get a brand new phone in a couple of years, it's not even going to have a 3G antenna in it. So I don't know how that's going to sort out. But the problem that I have is that I use AT&T, which works for me, and I get discounts and whatever. But in the Western U.S., there are many places where Verizon is favored. I noticed this in Oregon, Eastern Oregon especially. You can get a Verizon signal all day long, but you can't get AT&T. So I am out of luck, but you guys aren't. That's correct. So there's a few things that go into that. Our Go Roam gear um, receives like all all of the bands, everything that's published. Depending on the infrastructure and what's being broadcast, AT&T and T-Mobile most commonly use band 12, which is why you can sometimes get AT&T or T-Mobile, but not a Verizon because Verizon goes 13 most of the time, band 13. We have a SIM card for, for AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, because depending on where we're at and where we're traveling to, one or the other is going to be the best scenario for us. Now, from a cost perspective, T-Mobile is the nicest. <laughs> Verizon gotcha. is, is is second. AT&T, you know, like you mentioned, you had discounts and stuff, mm-hmm. but for most folks, it's a little bit more expensive, but they do have more bands. So, ah. so basically, we carry all of those in addition to Starlink so that we really have coverage anywhere we are. And we use our gear to to take those signals and smooth them into something that works really nicely for our computers, for our Zoom calls, for our Microsoft Teams stuff that we have to do. So we can be on video and on voice over IP phone calls because that really is like the fussiest thing on any yeah. network anywhere and do our jobs effectively. So we do carry all of those SIM cards. We don't use them all all the time. And uh, Starlink has really helped us with our upload speeds and being able to be in you know, the mountains in Colorado where we used to have to choose our location based on you know what signal we could get or that's one of the reasons we love our our can-am we, we would drive into an area and be like this looks gorgeous but where do we park this beast you know right so we'd hop in our can-am and go scout out a spot <laughs> make sure it had enough signal and then come back <laughs> and get the, the big trailer and drag it up there uh, but we definitely were limited to where we could go uh, all right. by having all of them it makes it a much easier transition for us to just be like this is a gorgeous spot let's park here all right, so that's a ton of great info there. Let's break it down a little bit. So sure. you carry, you have three carriers, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. Now, between AT&T and Verizon, that gives you access to basically every tower in the U.S. And T-Mobile is a discount carrier that uses the same towers as AT&T? They use some of the similar bands. So, And ah. that's part of the reason that T-Mobile bought Sprint. Um, right. Because Sprint owned some of those bands in different infrastructure towers. So AT&T, they have two extra bands that nobody else pushes content out on, right? For lack of mm-hmm. a better word, or Wi-Fi out on. Yeah. T-Mobile, if you can get it, is the fastest because they have the newest infrastructure of the oh, three carriers in most areas. So if you can get a T-Mobile signal, it's it's going to be the the quickest delivery if if ah. uh, if it's out there. Okay. See, I've learned something. That's good. The basic concept is, is that you guys have paid for three different services and you have a priority in which you use them based on availability and cost. First, it has to be available. And then if it is, you'll choose the cheapest cost version. That's correct. And so far, uh, we are using Starlink as our primary because it is it is a truly unlimited. So the other thing to factor into these mm-hmm. is, you know, you mentioned cost, but it's how much does that data really cost, right? right. Because in in the fine print of, of every one of AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile's contracts, it's going to have some throttling language in it, right. right? So once you get to X amount of data usage, they're going to slow it down and you are going to be hating life <laughs> for a few minutes if you're trying to work, you know, for the rest of that month or that billing cycle. So yeah. we find the Starlink un- is truly unlimited when there's no other folks that are using it too close to you. You know, density is an issue that 5 t- 5G looks to conquer, um, but we're just not there yet. So yeah. hopefully it will really do that everybody has a a certain priority. And if you have a business plan over a residential plan or a personal plan, 
uh, you'll get a little bit higher priority in those uh, situations when you're landing. <laughs> and, and there's a, a lot of people trying to get on the same spot. There's a whole other t- tier of first responders who always get first priority no matter what. Well, they okay. also operate on different bands too. So um, yes. our gear, just for the record, has has full first net bands too. So some oh, of our clients really? are first responders. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Okay. So now... <laughs> Based on everything you said, someone might might be wondering, well, they've got all these different plans, but they have Starlink. Why don't they just use Starlink? What do they need the rest of the stuff for? So introduce us to your experience with Starlink because it's still relatively new. And then tell us why you still have all these different things. We brought Starlink into our mix really to increase our upload speed. So our software optimizes our experiences while we're on Zoom and Microsoft Teams. And my husband often is on Teams and I'm on Zoom and we're we're using all the power to make sure we have really great internet-based video in phone calls. Mm-hmm. And then some days I couldn't even open my email because there wasn't yeah. a lo- enough left over to be able to get on my cloud-based email platform or God forbid I had to like upload a video to right. Facebook or YouTube or something and it just wasn't happening. I had an experience where it took me like 48 minutes to upload like a 37 second clip and I about lost my ever loving mind. So (laughs) I was like, we have to do something better, but we, we already had all the things that we could have to make sure the internet was good. And, and, uh, you know, short from, uh, batching my content and having to, you know, drive to somewhere with Wi-Fi and sit there for an hour and (laughs) upload it all. I was like, we need better. So that's why we got the Starlink. Now, well, Starlink is it's like 600 bucks, right? To get the, the dish itself. Yeah. And it costs about 135 bucks a month for the service, but it is truly unlimited. You just pay and that's it. You don't, there's never any extra fees or anything. It's 135 a month, whether you use one megabyte or 10,000 gigabytes. That is correct. And you can shut it off. So if we know we're going to be, you know, mooch docking for a couple months at my brother-in-law's house in, in Colorado, mm-hmm. we'll just shut it off. Right. So we don't uh, have to ha- bear that expense all the time. Is there a maintenance fee of any, like do you have to pay $10 a month to keep the account active or anything like that? I don't believe so. The The cost is definitely in the satellite. And and what I will tell you from my experience is my, my father also travels and lives the van life. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's in a, uh, a revel and he has Starlink oh, wow. as well. Well, Unfortunately, with his other vehicle, like hit his Starlink dish, right? So let me just talk a little bit about like what happens if your dish gets messed up because the most expensive component and the reason that it is $600 is the technology within that Starlink satellite. The satellite itself, it can't be permanently mounted. So every time you stop and you want to use it, you have to, you know, get it out of the box or whatever you have it in, take it out, set it up and turn it on. That's an important point. You're not going to be using Starlink while you're driving. This is a stop and set up device. And the dish, as it were, isn't like an old fashioned satellite. It's not actually even a dish, right? It's like this plate that's on a gimbal. Yes, that's a good way to describe it. And it moves with the satellites that are above it. So it has to have clear view of the sky and it moves on its own. That's why you can't leave it out (laughs) while you're Uh you're driving because it's constantly searching for signal. It would ruin it. So Uh what I was going to say is my dad, you know, messed up his satellite. And so he had to try to get a hold of Starlink for customer service. Terrible experience. It took him weeks to get a new dish, which was refurbished and very beat up. Um, and then to resync it. And I mean, it. he was he was down for a couple months in the Ooh. process time, especially because he was traveling, right? Like, where do you have that ship to, you know? Right. <laughs> so um, so I, I would say uh, if you get a Starlink, just make sure you're real careful with it. You know, when you get a Starlink in the mail, there are no words in or on the box. There's a QR code mm. that you can scan, but that's it. There's no one to call. There's no, like, you just wow. kind of have to figure it out. So just be very cognizant of that. It's not a customer service friendly kind of thing. So if you don't feel like you're very handy, you might just, you know, do it somewhere where you have support. <laughs> I've set up a lot of satellite dishes, you know, the old days, direct TV and all that and dish network. I, I climbed up on the roof and aimed the antennas and did all that and listened for the beeping TV sounds until it was strongest. My understanding with Starlink is that when it works properly, you just scan the QR code and stand back. And in five minutes, it says, okay, you're done. Yeah, it's quite delightful, honestly. As, as tech nerds, we loved watching that tech work. It's, <laughs> it was very cool. And and it also has this bacon period, by the way. So when we first got it out, we turned it on. We let it run for a minute. And because we're impatient, we immediately started running speed tests. And we were not impressed. Right. Spent all this money on this thing. And it's not going to work for us in the way we <laughs> wanted to. So we had a drink and we went to bed, right? And then we got up the next morning and it was kicking butt. And we were like, 
oh, okay, this is what that bacon period is for, ah. um, to let it kind of get synchronized. So, so give it that six hours uh, that they say you need for its uh, bacon period. We are using it to work during the day. So are there moments where it is not an amazingly performing internet? Yeah, it's, it's not like it's throttling or anything, but you know, if it's raining real hard or yeah. you know, happens Snow. to be some sort of obstructions, yeah, whatever the case may be, weather will affect that uh, signal quite heavily. And that's the reason that we have the other ones melded into our solution because we can't stop working because it rained. So we utilize it you know, during the day as our primary because it is truly unlimited and for the price, uh, a good connection. Mm -hmm. And then we supplement it with our T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. Like for example, yesterday, we, we did have some issues with our um, Starlink. It was like super windy, dusty out here. Mm -hmm. And the Starlink just didn't love that. So we wound up using uh, AT&T as our backup. And I think we chewed through like 12 gigs of data yesterday wow, on our AT&T card. <laughs> I know, right? That's just normal working for us. That's how much we use it. So, But we didn't have to worry about it. In fact, we didn't even know that that's what was happening until this morning when we oh, looked at it at so the reports. Your system automatically switches over. That's brilliant. Yes, yes, yes. My husband's an engineer by trade, and I'm forever grateful that he thinks of all the things that could come into play. So for me, having... The, all of the connections and, and our gear set up in the way it does, it reduces that stressful component from our travel. We no longer have to plan our routes based specifically on where we know we're going to get Wi-Fi signal or depend on somebody else's Wi-Fi signal to be significant enough for us to get our jobs done. Well, and, you know, you're going to have a cell phone anyway. I mean, Starlink doesn't replace cell phones. Oh, no. So, yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, I have to ask the question that's on everyone's mind. Have you ever woken up to finding a cat sleeping on your Starlink? Oh, no, no, <laughs> not yet. Have you heard of this phenomenon? <laughs> I have because they're warm, right? Is right, that the deal? They're warm, yeah. And so on cold nights, cats will tend to sleep on them if you're in a place where the dish is facing upward, which that may not be the case wherever you are. You know, it moves. I just think that's kind of a funny one of these problems that no engineer would ever foresee. <laughs> You know, <laughs> right? like, why is the signal so terrible? <laughs> you know, right. oh, there's a cat sleeping on it. You know? yep. uh, and I, and I, knowing um, you know how that company innovates, I wonder if they'll come up with some sort of anti-cat protocol for the dishes or something where it'll sh <laughs> shake or zap the cat or not. Probably not. Right. All right. Well, that is all great info, and and you, in many ways, for many of us, you are living the dream. I mean, you are kind of where a lot of people are trying to get right now. And I know that doesn't mean it's easy and you've got all life figured out and all that. But tell us the bottom line here. Uh, for the true digital nomad who is absolutely going to be 100% connected, what do they have to do? We don't get to live this life unless we continue to work. We are neither right. independently wealthy enough or old enough to retire. Like, that's mm -hmm. just the reality. So to do this, we have to be on the road. And the Internet is like the 100% biggest piece of that. So our gear and kind of what what we've packaged together or bundled together for folks is three components. So the number one component is a rooftop. Um, it doesn't have to be permanently mounted, but it is an omnidirectional Mom. antenna. Okay. And, and yeah, and the reason that's important is because so it's like a domed antenna. It receives all the bands and all the signals from a higher elevation point. So for one, you got to get above the density issues, right? And then you have to be able to receive those signals from every direction. And, you know, our gear kind of bounces them around in there and then shoots them down a, a, a low uh, loss gain cables directly into a router. Okay. So number one's the antenna. Okay. It yep. doesn't have to be permanent, but I, I feel like you really need to have that. That's why I've included it in the bundles. It makes a huge difference. Well, and inside number... your vehicle is kind of like a Faraday cage anyway. You know, you want to get the antenna outside your vehicle to begin with. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. We need to get it out and up. So, yep. okay. so that's what... And we started with other single directional antennas and just didn't have the performance. So we went to the Dome Omni. That's the one we've tested that is way better for us and for our clients. Okay. So that's number one. And all of our bundles have an antenna, either a five and one or seven and one, depending on how many LTE modems are in there. So mm -hmm. we created what we consider a wanderer bundle. So the other thing that's really important about our all of our bundles, and especially this wanderer one, is that they all have the ability to connect to what we call Wi-Fi WAN. And that is a wireless connection like the one that comes from your Starlink, if you have a Starlink, 
or like the one you would get at Starbucks if you park in a Starbucks parking lot to pick up some signal, right? You could actually pump it into your your rig or like we like to do, which is mooch docking. If we happen to be at a friend's or, you know, family's uh, location that has Wi-Fi, we can suck that into our solution. So that's really important that we have that Wi-Fi WAN enabled in all of our bundles. Our Wanderer bundle is $909. It's the antenna. It's a ruggedized router. So that's the other thing I forgot to mention is, I mean, I know all of you out there traveling have experience with the way that electronics are not built for uh, rattling, vibrating, extreme temperatures. Like that's just not what they were created for. Um, Our routers are though. So if you have, uh, you know, a place where you need to store your rig for the winter or the summer, you can leave our gear in it. Uh, It can go up to like 140 degrees or something ridiculous and like negative 40 or something. So um, it's ruggedized and meant for that. They were built for oil rigs actually. So the the routers themselves are super rugged. So I'm sure some people are like $900. It sounds like a lot of money, but it actually, that price surprises me. And this is the first time we've talked money folks. So I, you know, I don't, I don't actually know how much stuff costs yet. That's not bad. When you compare that to WeBoost, you know, there's 600 and this does a whole lot more. Absolutely. It does a whole lot more. So we've got all of that together. The Wanderer is a is a one SIM slot solution. So that means you're going to have your AT&T SIM card, and then you can use your Starlink, you can use the Mooch Docking Wi-Fi WAN, wherever you happen to be, and, and mesh those two signals together. So when you say it needs a SIM card, that means this device is actually going to have its own phone plan. It's actually going to have its own phone number, not that you'd ever use it. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely yeah. an important point to make. Yes. So, so yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's not using your regular phone plan. You are basically getting another phone plan for this device. That is correct. You'll need okay. a SIM card, a data plan. Um, a, we just got an extra with our own device is what we told the, the folks that we Right. <laughs> that we bought the SIM yeah. card for, right? And put it in there. And we do provide some of those SIMs for our clients as well. But all of our products are going to operate on putting a SIM card in it. Okay, that's good. So our Wanderer bundle that's $909 is, is a one carrier SIM plus the Wi-Fi WAN, which I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, and it also has a category 12 router. So most iPhones are operating on like a category four, or category five router from a speed perspective. And this one has a 12 and, and the number is important in these instances. Uh, and the, uh, all of the gear operates on all of the available bands, right. As we talked about a little bit earlier. So that's important to note. So that's the, that's our primary wanderer bundle. Um, it's, it's a pretty low entry cost for folks that, that still need that stability uh, yeah. and they want to use the Wi-Fi WAN. So we love that. That's the antenna, the router and our custom configuration. So we, how, we create a config for everybody. How big is the dome? Like would this fit on a sprinter? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's not a big dome. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, are we talking about an upside down salad bowl here or, um, yeah, a bird bath. Like a, yeah, not even a bird bath. Not okay. even that big. Yeah. Okay. More like a salad bowl, like a nice salad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> salad solution. All right. I know. I, I know I'm hungry. No. <laughs> <laughs> and and this of course runs on 12 volts. It, runs it does. 12 volts. Okay. It does. So so every one of these, um, every one of our bundles, you can either run 12 volts with the like a cigarette lighter adapter or whatever they call those now, because people yeah. don't really have cigarette lighters in their vehicles right. anymore, but that's what we call them. Or you can you can plug it in. It comes with both options. Okay. Perfect. On how you want it. And uh and yeah. So that's the that's our smallest bundle. Mm-hmm. Um the next the next bundle that we created <clears throat> includes the all of the same capacity I just told you about in the Wanderer bundle. However, it has a category 20 router, so it's wow. even faster. And that bundle includes the things that make our Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Google Workspaces work really, really fantastically over a, a VPN tunnel of protected traffic. Wow. So all of my clients get kind of like an interrogation, like, what are you using every day to right. work so we can understand exactly how to configure it for them? But, you know, Zoom, Teams, Google Workspaces, uh, and any voiceover IP carrier um, needs this uh, protected VPN tunnel, basically. So that bundle, the antenna, the slightly bigger router, and the uh, VPN tunnel is uh, 1310 so oh. $1,310. Again, less than I expected. So not terribly more. Yeah. I got one more. The one we use the most is the working from Rome bundle. And it's the Explorer one that I just talked about, but it has uh, four SIM slots. Uh, That's the wow. most important thing. So it has four sp- SIM slots and it has two active LTE modems. So you can run an active active, right? That's how we run Verizon and T-Mobile and our Starlink. 
I could see that being super valuable if you were saying doing half the year up in Colorado and the other half down in Baja or something like Precisely. that, where you'd want all those SIM slots. And and how much was that one? That one is a thousand four eighty five. Again, it's still not crazy expensive. Now, do you have any monthly fees for this or anything? I mean, you're not actually providing any service. You're you're just basically selling hardware. Right. That's the hardware. Um, and then the only monthly service is if you choose to get a 300 gig Verizon mobile broadband SIM card for us to power it. And that's uh, 95 bucks a month. Wow. For 300 gigs. That's not yeah. bad. Yeah. Wow. And seriously, folks, we did not talk price before. Um, she offered to come on the show and I said, yes. And I was just going to let it all play out. And these prices are much, much less than I thought because I know how much this stuff costs. So, wow, you've created something kind of amazing here. I am super impressed with this. So what tips would you give people who are living in a van to improve their connectivity just in general? So number one, in your Google Chrome, enable the data saving mode. Okay. Ah. Uh, it's just under the settings, enable that because that will save you so much data. Batch your uploads. You know, if you've got a bunch of content you need to upload or, or files you need to send, do that when you get back to Wi-Fi. Try not to do that out on the road if you can. That makes um, sense. Turn off all those notifications and cloud backups and the automatic syncing, right? So a lot yeah. of your apps are going to say, you know, they're working in the background. Don't do that. Turn it off. <laughs> so, and then, yeah. you know, you can change your streaming preferences if you want to watch some Netflix or something down to a real low level. Right. I mean, folks like, oh, I have to have everything in 6K HD. It's like, no, you don't. You're watching this on your phone, you know? Exactly. <laughs> turn it down as much as you can before it starts getting fuzzy. And you'll be surprised how much you can turn it down. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And another tip that I've learned, I spend a lot of time on cruise ships, which often have terrible connectivity. When you're traveling, turn off automatic app updates. Um, yes. So the way, the way you normally have it is your apps will update when a new version comes down. What's happened to me on many cruises is that a big app will start downloading and then die. And that kills the app until you're finished. So you might have some app that you have to use all the time in a low bandwidth situation. You could lose access to it if it tries to update. Yeah. Also, I would say, um, especially when we're traveling, like we'd love to take a million photos. You got to turn off the way that iCloud oh, yeah. um, optimizes your photos because that's a huge data suck. That's going to that's gonna pull it down and, and then just stop your syncing. I mean, it's something you have to change about you know, the way that you operate normally, because in a sticks and bricks, you know, if you've got, you know, fiber in your house, whatever, most people don't think about the fact of the updates of your phone at night, how it's set, that kind of stuff. So you have to be a little bit more um, intentional about when you update that stuff, but turn that off while you're on a trip with low bandwidth, because that's going to eat up your data. Yeah, that's very true. And another thing is, unless you're waiting for an emergency phone call or something, Turn the phone off. I mean, exactly. You, you don't have to charge it then either. You know, we we don't think like that because, well, I always have my phone on. Someone might be trying to call me. But, you know, if you're out in the boonies, turn the phone off. It's OK. You can survive a night without the phone being on. Right. That's what we're always like. You know, is anybody going to die because I didn't answer my phone? We, we, You know, it's one of yeah. those like, no, like nothing's going to be that urgent. It is funny, though, because we live in such a connected way. We did a trip to um, Montana and Glacier National mm -hmm. uh, last year. It was so gorgeous um, last fall or two falls ago. And it was part of our big proof of concept trip. And we told all of our children, like, we are going to be out of service. We had researched it. We knew it. It was one of those moments we were like looking forward to being off grid for a bit, you know, like it was a yeah. real vacation for us. Yeah. Man, as soon as we got up into Glacier and, and we got some service again from where we had been camped at, our phones were going crazy because yeah. they didn't believe that was actually going to be true for us because it's so out of character for us to be truly connected. Our our kids are worried. They're calling each other. They're calling our parents. Like It's yep. crazy. But, you know, they just get used to that kind of thing. So you got to create the right expectation for the people that know and love you and might be looking for you. It, it, it's sometimes it's nice living in the future. And I think the tech that you guys have put together, which to be fair, this is all tech that existed, but you guys have figured out how to optimize it for digital nomads. That's that's your value add. And that's I, correct. I think that's brilliant because it's kind of a niche market. And I don't know that some major company is ever you know, like, you know, Ford does not make vans for camper people. They, they came up with one that has some lights and stickers on it, but there just aren't enough of us to matter to them. 
but yeah. there are enough of us to matter to you and right. thank you <laughs> thank you yeah. for, thank you for doing this so how do people <laughs> get in touch with you how do you know give me all your marketing stuff so people can get in touch with you and i'll have links in the show notes of course we are tech nerds. We we have access to technology that that folks can't buy in a store. Like, how can we use that to serve ourselves? A so I mean, selfishly, we had to solve our own problem first, and now we can bundle it and provide it to other folks so they can do the same. Which is very mm-hmm. exciting to be able to help folks really have the liberty that that we all seek this for. So the best way to get a hold of me is through our website, goroam.tech. So that's www.goroam.tech. Okay. When you get there. One of the requirements of our uh, manufacturer of this particular gear is that we know who is looking at the pricing and we are selling to. So you're going to encounter a thing that says, enter your email address to see pricing. I'm sorry. It's a requirement of my manufacturer and I can't get around it. So I just want to put that out there for folks. I promise there's no spamming happening. It's just a, a legal thing because we had to get engineering certified in order to sell this product to you folks. So they are very protective of the uh, gear on its own and being misconfigured and it giving them a bad name. So okay. that's the reason for that. Okay. Um, and there you'll find the different packages, what they include. Um, you'll see some of our videos, lots of off-roading stuff and us being silly and just having general shenanigans. Um, I do write some blogs there as well, mm-hmm. which might have some helpful information, but you can order all the packages online. Our process looks like uh, as soon as you order a package or reach out to us through the contact form that's there on the website, uh, we have a call with you to understand understand what it is that you're using to make sure it's the right plan. Um, you know, yeah. figure out if you want one of our SIM cards or you want your own uh, from your own source to put in there. And we have a bunch of links to videos on how to install the rooftop antenna as we did on our rig. Good. Yeah, we've got that up there as well. So there's a ton of information there. Um, my contact info is there. You can email us directly to info at goroam.tech. And we do respond to that quite fantastically. And yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to get a hold of us. Excellent. Jess, that is awesome. And again, folks, don't worry about writing down the things if you're driving or whatever. I will have links in the show notes. You can always get the show notes at builttogo.com. That's two T's, not three, not one. So Jess, this is awesome. One last thing we have to cover how hard is it to install one of these systems? I mean, you've got something on the roof. So at some point, a wire has to get into the vehicle. That's correct. So there's a couple different options. Um, you can you can just pole mount it if you want and just like feed it through a crack in the door. A lot of folks do that or a crack mm-hmm. in the window, right? That's not a big deal. You can take it down and whatnot. We permanently installed it and fished you know, the wires down through the roof. So as long as you seal it properly, it'll be fine. So um, we recommend putting a, um, like a box to get it up a little bit higher, especially have solar panels and stuff. That's all in, in one of the installation videos that okay. you can see. And the right amount of lap sealant, man, you got to yeah, use that self-leveling lap sealant. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. So that's yeah. the key. Uh, it might be a little intimidating to some folks. Uh, I have clients who hire uh, mobile RV techs yeah. uh, to come out and install them for them. If they're not you know, feeling greatly comfortable with that process, that's fine too. If you already have solar panels, you've got the hole. I mean, this is, yeah. it's, it's, it's very, it's from what I understand, I've never done it, but it sounds very similar to installing solar panels and actually a lot easier because it's smaller. We're not just going to ship you a box and say, good luck. In fact, we, we set up uh, individual uh, SSID networks to connect to based on what it is you use. So for example, we have um, the, the box in our rig configured to use what we call our play network. So our clients all get you know, SSIDs, ones for Go Roam work, Go Roam play, and then usually like a Go Roam critical or a guest network, depending on what they're using it for. Oh, nice. And those are set to automatically connect to whatever we've put that priority. So for example, our Go Roam work network uh, is, is using the VPN tunnel. It's optimized for Zoom and Microsoft Teams and all that good stuff we talked about. Our oh. Go Roam play network is what we connect our TVs to and our phones to and that sort of thing. Because if that doesn't work so amazingly over the Starlink for some reason, big deal. Right, right. You and know? it's all like downstream. It's, not, it's all downstream. So yeah. that's a great way to do it. So that's how, again, we kind of set this up so you don't have to stress about it. Jess, awesome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for contacting me and spending the time with me here. And, and folks, if you have any questions about all this stuff, you know, Hey, Jess gave you her contact info. You can ask her and you can always ask me general questions if you don't want to bother Jess, which is always completely fine. I am Jeff at built2go.com. That's two T's, not three, not one. Jess, 
thank you so much. Thank you for living the dream and making it a little bit more accessible for the rest of us who are just trying to get there. Oh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to helping anybody. So don't be don't be shy about reaching out. <laughs>